Hello, uh, I'm Richard Raffin. Uh, yesterday I was dumping stuff uh, at the green waste tip and uh, noticed these, uh, which looked like rather good quality timber. I have no idea what it is, um, but there's one way to find out, and that is to turn them some. So this is beginning to look very much like um, Bradford pear or um, Manchurian pear. So get it onto a uh, onto the screw chuck and see what happens. Half inch spindle guard. Wonderful stuff, magic. Three inch deep fluted bowl gouge. Cuts beautifully, and uh, I've got another, oh, probably 20 or 30 bowls like this in those logs, and a few slightly larger. So that's a wonderful find. So I'll just carry on and make this into a small decorative bowl. 3 8 spindle gouge.
just going to turn this one thin um, so and then put it in the microwave just so I can see what it's going to do. Create so gold gouge. Going thin, a light will be a great help. Why people don't like scrapers? So that'll probably be thin enough and I'll pop that in the microwave to see what happens to it. A bit of plastic just to uh, protect the foot from the jaws, so it'll probably stain the wood otherwise. Here we go, so this will go in for a minute to start with. You always want to watch these uh, for the first time just in case they um, start to burn. In 30 seconds, it's very unlikely, but uh, uh, you don't want to ruin your microwave. Oh, that's hot, but it's just how you want it. And that will just leave that there to dry off for a bit, and we'll see what it looks like in a few minutes. So, about five minutes later, um, most of the moisture's come out of the wood and it hasn't moved one iota absolutely flat it's four days later and uh, my little bowl has just distorted a little bit more which doesn't worry me at all um, and it's nice to know that uh, when i turn some bowls out of this stuff uh, there will be a bit of distortion i rather like that Now, cutting up the logs, uh, this was a crotch, um, and I've just gone down the middle of it with this 20mm uh, blade, uh, so three quarters of an inch thick blade. And the next thing I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to do is dust on so I won't be saying anything. Um, I've got flat areas, I can then uh, aim to get a right angle to these sides so that I can basically cut small boards uh, out of each blank. And uh, I anticipate I should get four or five blanks out of this. Um, and uh, we'll see what happens.
now gets circles on it. I've got some uh, fiddleback figure there, which hopefully will be hidden in under there in a little plate. So. And this is fairly stable wood, so uh, well, if it's what I think it is, it, it, it has all the look of a stable wood. This one, that has what looks like a knot in it, which is coming out there, so that will go in that direction. It looks pretty solid, uh, but I think I'll take the biggest one I can out of this side, and then I can probably move to the side and just keep keep the uh, actual knot over to the side of the bottom. I don't really want it going down the middle because it's likely to produce some warping problems. Keep this for boxes. This end. So the other option here um, would be to cut that across and have uh, a box, box there, and a box blank in there. Hand grain boxes. Um, that's going to take some years to dry and I'm not sure at my age I can expect to necessarily use the blank so I'll probably go for bowls. And finally I've got this one which is big enough to make um, my little pots from. The pith is just there in the middle and I can see it. It's a pretty accurate cut. There's a piss just there, so it runs right across that way. So um, I can just take a couple of um, of uh, blanks for that, for what I call pots enclosed forms. One. And the pith will be slightly off to one side, so it means if there is any distortion, the pots will lurch over to one side, which I don't mind happening at all. So that'll be good. Now, I've also got, when I cut this around here, I can look at the side. And I've got a couple of little bowls in there which would basically be that kind of shape. They're tucked away in there. Uh, but I can't cut that with this blade. I need the, um, the half inch blade on to do the rest. So that's that for this log. Uh, if I wanted little shallower pots, uh, bowls, then I could just put that through again and, uh, and get to four bowls out of that block. Oh, I almost forgot about this bit, which when I was cutting along the pith uh, gave me this big kind of triangular shape. Now that's uh, spatulas sitting in there. Um, there's the paddle end. And I just cut them back to about there. And that'll give me, uh, in fact, I'll do it now.
these aren't exactly square uh, on the end here or no, it's a bit squarer than I thought uh, but that'll all turn down and um, got a nice little spatula. In fact you've got four nice little spatulas which uh, if you're going to be making any money from your craft is probably afford another set of chuck jaws with that one. So this is what we have from the uh, from the log. This is the original stuff which I uh, cut out of a fork. Um, <coughs> Wrapped up bowls are in with some shavings in there. There are two at the moment, and there's one more blank to come of, of, of the uh, very first blank. Um, these have been cut in half along the pith, and. Uh, these were done on the bandsaw and you can see here the little wedge marks, bandsaw got stuck so I had quite a drama with that one. Um, the next stage will be to cut the sides off and uh, and then cut a, or I'll probably just cut a side off, cut a disc and um, turn a ball straight out of that and get something out of the middle. So that's where you go with uh, a green log. The sooner you can split it along the um, along the pith along the major split uh, the sooner you can do that the better now I would think this tree was probably growing two days ago three at the most so the half logs you've uh, just seen um, were all slabbed up um, some of them you recognize uh, I've got the circles marked out here circles marked out here and on the slightly newer heavier bits um, that could be a big bowl but I might also uh, just cut it in take a slab across there and go into it from that direction and make a big pot uh, so that'll be probably what happens to that unless there's a more suitable blank below but the next job is going to be to um, cut these into bowl blanks uh, and then rough turn them and the sooner I can do that the better I think from those blocks I cut uh, these discs, um, what are this, 270 across, so they'll, they'll finish about 265, which I think is just under 11 inches. Um, that'll be a rounded enclosed pot. A few smaller ones here, so what have I got, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. So I got basically 16 bowl blanks out of that. And then down here I've got other odd blocks which I'll cut in a separate video. Uh, I've kept a couple of the boards here which I think will just dry it without splitting on the ends. Um, but both those I'm going to rough turn into something else uh, but not bowls. So my first job is going to be to uh, rough turn this slot into uh, very thick bowls and I'll return them later. So here we are after a couple of hours, uh, a lot of mess, which I'm now going to have to clean up. But I also have 17 roughed out bowls, uh, which are the two stacks to the left. And then on the right we have uh, the bowls saved from the insides of the others.